Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 Infinite Dis Maricopa Open presented by The Dish Shack. We're of course here at Maricopa Meadows in Maricopa, Arizona. We've got our leader Adam Hammes along with his good friend Anthony Barella. They've got a comfortable lead over this gentleman Luke Sampson who we're seeing for the first time this weekend and Jordan Castro's rejoining the coverage. He also sits a few back just off the pace, Jordan sits at even along with Luke Sampson, and these guys are ready to go on hole number one. Pretty straightforward, 287 feet. Of course, the sidewalk on the right is out of bounds. And seeing a lot of players go with the forehand off to the left-hand side, trying to just keep the sidewalk entirely out of play. It seems like a pretty safe bet. And at 287, any player that's uh, sitting atop a leaderboard after two rounds, probably has a forehand that would work just fine. And Adam, no problem. He's going to put himself within five, maybe eight feet. Rella, just one back of Hamas. I know Nick Newton is not just <laughs> very quiet. He is not here. This is super late on Sunday night, and Nick was heading back. Technology and everything else couldn't make it happen, although I very much appreciate him joining the last couple of nights. A little forehand by Luke. No problem. Luke, originally out of the Midwest, out of Illinois. Jordan Casher, also a Midwesterner. Out of Minnesota. Adam Hammes, northern Wisconsin, so quite the Midwest representation yeah. here. Of course, A.B. from right here in Arizona. Castro with his first look at birdie. Well, he'll keep looking. That is off the mark to get things started. Luke's going to pick up a birdie, move to one under. As you can see, they have some work to do if they're trying to catch up to Hamas or Barella. Hole one is certainly one you feel like you need to get out here. A lot of people talking about the ace pool that is available. It was a $10 ace pool. And when it was all said and done, it looked like there was about $1,600 in the ace pool. And going into this round, we had heard of two aces, one of which was in the ace pool, the other was not. So as of the start of this round, $1,600 was heading to one gentleman's pocket, unless somebody could get a piece of that. We're going to head over to hole two, 395 feet. Typically, we've seen a hanging basket on this hole. They've changed that up since last year, and it's now firmly mounted in the ground. Just about where we would have otherwise seen the basket hanging. Adam looking to make the adjustment from round number two and that is a par job so he's off to a great start and Barella would love to copy his effort from round two he parked it himself this one's much higher and doesn't get a skip looks like he's past the tree so that should still give him a look at birdie Luke letting that one go very low. Didn't find any danger, but he is at best looking at a par. And Castro leaking off to the left side. Not really bringing OB into play, but also not looking too good for a birdie unless he gives it a long run. And Luke's actually a little closer than I realized. But with the branches, the best he's looking to do is pitch up, take the par, move on. 
Castro's pin high. And you got to be delicate with that one. If you get too aggressive, you could easily carry past the pin, find the OB that's no more than 15 or 20 feet past, and AB. No big deal. Who needs to be parked? AB was telling me he's just started up another semester of college. And as of right now, it looks like he's going for finance. Back to back birdies for Hamas to open the round. Jordan's in, and Luke is probably going to do the same. These are straight ballers. Well, that's what it that's what it seems like anyway. I don't know. That's why AB is going to run over to the basketball court. He's got work to do. First, we're going to take a look at hole number three. This is a combined hole, so you're not playing to that basket that we just went over. That is the regular hole number three. This is actually four's basket, and we're playing to this. Many years we've seen this elevated, but it is not this year. Here's... <laughs> if you had to go up against anyone one-on-one -on -one in disc golf, who don't you want to play in Jerem. basketball? Jerem, because he's too big. Fair enough. <laughs> if there was zero hesitation, I, I don't know if Germ's just that good or, as he said, he's just that tall. I mean, not too many people exactly tower over AB. Uh, leaks left, finds the out of bounds by about eight feet. AB also off the mark. Let's see if Luke can make a correction from what he's seen from the previous two throws. Coming in low. I'm not going to lie. That is the first time I have ever recorded what is referred to as a black ace. Anytime you accidentally ace the ba a basket you're not going for or trying to get, it is commonly referred to as a black ace. That basket, as you can see, even had a black garbage bag in it uh, just to ensure that players don't play to it. on the front edge or the back edge, right, of that disc? It has to be the front edge? What? Okay. Apparently, this basket had been aced three times this weekend. That's what uh, tournament director Sam tells me. So, <laughs> and now look at the obstacle that it remains for Luke. Uh, you have to mark your lie, and you you would treat it just like a tree. You're not you're not giving any any penalties. Uh, there's no other consequences other than kind of an awkward position and the obstacle that it creates. So after. Hamas is out of bounds. We've got him 
with his Bushnell rangefinder telling me it's 309 feet to the pin. He has to play to the right of that tree where there's a Mando. And not quite enough hookup on it. He'll be left with a putt. Jordan a little closer at 276. Fortunately, though, he only throw that, threw that about 220. Here's Luke for what would be his third shot. A frustration there by Luke. That was a relatively routine approach for him and got away on him. AB with a long jumper. Grabs metal for the birdie, but going to have to settle for the par. I'll give Castro just under 35 feet, maybe. Either way, doesn't connect, and after such a good drive, that's going to be a little bit frustrating letting that one slip past. And so with that, Luke will be tapping in for bogey. He's going to go back to even, exactly where he started, him along with Castro. Amos has a chance to save his par here. So after back-to-back -back birdies, comes in with the par save from the OB stroke. So I guess, you know how I love to ask questions and have you guys interact down there in the chat. Tell me, have you ever seen or accidentally aced the wrong basket yourself at any point? Maybe there's multiple baskets on the course or on a single hole, whatever the case might be. Maybe it's a fairway or two over, but let me know if you've ever accidentally aced the wrong basket. We call that a black ace. All right. Beautiful. Hole number four, 410 feet. I feel like it plays all of that and then some, even though it's slightly downhill. Guarded by those two or three trees. Again, going to hang out at the catch cam position. And that is beautiful. Great line by Adam Hammes putting himself inside the circle. AB with plenty of power. In fact, that looks like too much power. It's going to go all the way past. All the years I've been filming here, I've never seen someone go past it over that sidewalk deep as AB just did. So too much juice. He'll still have inside 40 feet to try and save the par. Castro. Wow, coming right in underneath the pin. I don't do it often, but we're going to take another look at it. This is a quick replay for us. Oh, and that just splashes short of the basket. Castro should have an easy tap in birdie. We'll see if Luke can have a short memory trying to erase the bogey from the previous hole. Oh, and that tree catches him. I'm not sure if that's a good catch or not. It looked like it was going to possibly carry past the pin. And... All right, my estimate was off, even though I was out there. This is definitely more than 40 feet for Borella to save the par. As you can see, another beautiful day out here in Maricopa. Yes, we had the crazy winds at Copper Sky in round one. A little less windy in round two, and I'd say today is even a little less windy than it was from round two.
Luke picking up his second birdie on the round. He'll move back to one under. There were only four birdies on this one during round number two. Today is a little bit more generous. And after the skip, Castro is able to still put it in for the birdie. Two-stroke swing between him and A.B., along with Luke, who had the birdie. So we're going to head over to hole number five, another safari-style hole. Thanks to our sponsors. In fact, one of our presenting and title sponsors in Infinite Disc. And taking a look at five. Normally, you'd play to the short basket on that right side. Instead, we're going to go all the way deep to the next basket. Both of them near water's edge. So you're going to play to a landing zone. Unfortunately, I don't think it's tempting enough <laughs> for even the biggest of arms. And there's really nothing to gain by trying to go all the way for the second landing zone. <laughs> Castro a little bit nervous hanging it out to that right side. <laughs> we, well, that was actually a disc that had crossed the road from hole number 19. So it came across the road. It was out of bounds on 19, coming over to this one as <laughs> Adams playing the spike hyzer to that. Well, I thought he was pushing the left side, but that's actually pretty much center, center of the landing zone there. A, B. You see these guys playing three, three fifty, just trying to put it out there into the landing zone. Hang it way out over the water, but that doesn't get much skip, so he's still going to have a look at birdie. Castro comes in at 378. Oh, unfortunately, just not enough power for Castro. So he's going to just move up about 40 or 50 feet. Meanwhile, Adam had used the rangefinder, comes in about six feet closer than Castro. He's going to put up his onyx. Oh! Oh! Let's go! Damn, get back! Wow. Give everybody the distance in the disc again. They're gonna uh, it was about 372. I threw my stable onyx. Cash it. We'll take it. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Certainly is. Nice shot. Adam says that's one of the longest throw-ins that he's had in recent memory. Ace or otherwise. I, I, we don't want to start a fight about if that's a field ace or a fairway ace. I, I know where that argument will go, so that's fine. We won't go there. Just simply put, it's an eagle from 372 feet. He goes and clears it out, and you can hear a little bit of the waterfalls there in the background. I'm not talking about TLC. Oh, yes. And Barella answers. Now, that, that is certainly some kind of flex. When you're cashing a 55, 60-footer 
for birdie, and you're still losing a stroke to the leader. Meanwhile, a little bit of struggle here for Castro. Luke's got a look for birdie from about circle's edge. Oh, and high left chain brings it in. Man, apparently this basket catches everything. Have to get it anywhere near it. I think the TikTokers would say that Castro didn't understand the assignment. Mm, that's going to hurt a little bit. He walks away with a double bogey. Wow, what a turn of events. Just when I thought things were crazy back on the black ace on three, then this happens. Unreal as we go over to hole six, playing as the second most difficult hole, just as it did in round number two. 290 feet. This green is so tough to stick it on, and you're seeing that as the grass is either wearing out or just getting harder and harder up on top, it's making it more difficult for the golfers to get disc to stop there. Adam with plenty of power, but then it just barely hops over the ridge there and goes OB deep. He doesn't necessarily, he doesn't know that after he's thrown the shot. Oh, and left of the pan, and that also is going to slide up and over the OB railing that's on the backside. Anthony let this one finish hard left yesterday, and he actually found the road off on the left side. Today he's going to be close to it, but he'll be in bounds. See if Castro can quickly make up for the double on the previous hole, and that's a great shot, but somehow it jumps up and over and showing there. AB, who was out of bounds beyond that line yesterday, today resting up against it and is safe. And at that point, the only play you have is just to pitch it up under the pin. A little conversation. There was a couple spectators that were giving some assistance as to where they came in there, but ultimately it's the group's decision. Both Castro and Hamas decided that they were pretty much gone out in the exact same spot. Or at least a similar spot, I should say. And Hamas going to walk away unscathed. Castro's got a tester. That needs to sit. And it does sit down. That could have carried back into the OB or possibly gotten up and rolled on him. So, got to be happy that it sat there for him. And just like we saw from Hamas, Luke was able to tap in, salvage the par. And that is, unfortunately, another double bogey for Castro. That means it's going to be back-to-back -back doubles as AB will tap in and walk away with a par, which saves him three strokes. He took a triple bogey six on that in round number two. So eh, maybe, maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm thinking of this hole. This one didn't treat him well. I know that, too. Hole seven, 460 feet. This is just a power shot and hope you don't let it leak out to the left. Also, you gotta be careful. You can't just pull it anywhere to the right. That was the mistake AB made yesterday. And he had thrown it straight into the playground area and that's what started his terrible run of events. And a perfectly executed shot there by Hamas. Great correction. Yesterday he was high on the left side. Hit carried out into the road. We'll see what Luke can do. Yeah, 
in the grate up there, that little culvert and grate area, that is considered out of bounds. So AB a little more hyzer than the previous day. Oh, no. We're all going to moan when I say that was not a great shot. Guys, I'm obligated to do this. Oh, and Jordan gets all the way through. Luke with a look. And that is certainly the biggest problem here is if you draw metal and it gets up and rolls at all, I've seen it hit and then roll down into that uh, culvert area and then roll make that OB. So you have to be careful with your angle or you could just daintily put it up and in. Nice putt by Castro. Rella pulls it back from being out of bounds. And not even realizing just how close that Hamas had put it. He's tapping in for the birdie. Hamas now five under through the first seven holes. And has really distanced himself. Barella is about to tap in for the bogey. That's going to bring him to five under. So Barella one down on the round. Meanwhile, Hamas five down on the round. Let's see if anyone else can chase these guys down. But full eight, 358 feet. Pretty straightforward. I feel like we have three or four holes that are very similar to this one. At least in terms of distance. And then playing up into the left side where obviously the sidewalk and the road can come into play as out of bounds. Also on the right hand side, anything that gets up and over the curb can be out of bounds as well. Hamas trying to make somehow to keep that in bounds. I was going to say make an adjustment. I, I do want to say talking about making adjustments, I'd love for you guys to guess how many OB strokes we're going to see here during this round. And I think I did the math right. There were 26 yesterday. So keep that in mind. There were 26 OB strokes here on the lead card that was featured on the channel. I don't know if you're keeping a running count right now, but 26. Round number two. That got up and pulled a little bit to the right. I think I confirmed with Barella that is, in fact, a T-Bird. No, it's a disc he goes to often. You know, one thing we've seen from Borello over the last couple of days is there's been a few times where he's not necessarily had a great tee shot, but then has made up for it with a very lengthy putt. Heck, we've seen that a couple of times this round already. It, it's interesting to, to note it and to see it because I think there's a, a frustration level and then somehow he gets this additional focus that comes in to then make up for it and... You often see him not pleased with it because he's so frustrated with the poor tee shot, but then I see him make up for it with this incredible long putt as Castro's in for the birdie and Barella certainly riding the frustration train. If that is such a thing, I think there's a train of frustration that just rolls. I wonder if that even starts or finishes. Either way. Luke's in after the park job. Big shout out to the guys over at the Dish Shack. Make sure you check them out when you're in the Phoenix area as we're heading over to the combined hole. A long one, 796. I don't think we've got any LARPing or paintballing or squirt guns or anything like that going on on the right side of the fairway here today.
A little reset here for Castro. And there's some trees blocking me, which is why I'm not a little more to the left. But I was thinking that was heading toward the OB or possibly even toward the Mando tree. And it doesn't appear that it did. All right, so now maybe this T-pad is in their head. We get a reset here from Luke. And also noticing the score is Luke. Sitting at three under, just two off the pace of Barella. Hammett seems to have things in cruise control at the moment, but we know just how much trouble's out here. Hammett's as well. Maybe that T pad is possessed. Sending vibes. <laughs> Sending something up through the soles of their shoes. That is a great shot by Hamas. You really couldn't ask for much more as I pan to look at the deep basket. Of course, that regular basket is out there in bag. Okay, okay, so I'll take it back. A near-perfect shot by Hamas followed up by a truly perfect shot there by Barella. Bless you. Sidewalk OB, that left side for Castro. Hamas ranged this at 345 and then pulled out a buzz. Little bit short. You have to think he just saw what happened to. Castro and just the one mistake you don't want to make is put too much on it. I'd rather come up a little short than go deep here, of course, or get some kind of a skip or a flare as Barella pulls that one. And it goes just, I, I think he afterwards said something about it just going too straight on him. And he's not sure why it's doing that. I think that's one of his more stable rocks. And Luke also with a huge drive. Gonna put himself a little bit short, but that is a huge drive. Castro not <laughs> taking any more chances. This is Barella for Birdie. Okay. <laughs> I guess you could just do that. <laughs> He goes back to two under on the round. Hamas is trying to get to six under on the round here. And he's got to be happy that sat down. Of course, he, you know, threw it a little bit too high, but just for it to sit, and that one was a little bit high, not quite as high as Adams, but it's in. And Luke getting on a little bit of a roll here. That's four under through the first nine holes. And again, hanging right there with Barella, maybe trying to make a charge up the podium. Castro goes back to plus two. And I'm going to give you the final hole here of the front half. Hole number 10, 294 feet. I was just saying yesterday how much I love to film this hole. I really like the hole. I love the challenge to it. It's playing as one of the easier holes on the course today. Well, not for me and my camera. You're going to see in a moment. Uh, I had a full-blown panic. <laughs> moment of panic here. We're going to first see Luke. Oh, that is a unique angle. A very unique angle taken and pays off. Oh, 
Barella's going to challenge the right side OB. He comes up just short. 35, maybe 40 feet at most. And that's going to nestle right up there. And at this point, I go to hit record for <laughs> Jordan's shot, and the camera doesn't like it. So actually, uh, didn't see Jordan's drive, which is going to land right there. And also, AB had just putt for birdie and cashed it in. So AB's at 7, Luke's at 5, and this is Jordan now. Someday I'll give you the really long story, but for whatever reason, some of the cameras, once you get to 600 clips, if you don't have things reinitialized, it just doesn't let you record anymore. It's jacked up. Lesson learned. Hopefully. Either way. <laughs> we see the tap in. Hamas seems to be on a roll. I'm going to start to close it out. Thank you to all the supporters. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, do all those things. I asked you a couple questions earlier. Make sure you answer those in the comments so that you can be eligible to win. I've got a few giveaways that are going to be happening from here, and I can't say it enough. Uh, the guys over at the Dish Shack, along with Infinite Disc, they're making this all possible, along with Sam and Chuck and the whole crew. That's the Infinite Disc Maricopa Open presented by the Dish Shack. That's the front half. We'll catch you guys in the back as we close out the tournament. We'll see you there.